Okay, so this is like my fifth time trying to film this video. Oh, Lord. Anyway, hi, my name is Michaela. I'm a 21 year old foster mom, making videos about motherhood, foster care, cooking, cleaning, lifestyle hauls, and recently crime videos. I'm all over the place, as you can tell. And that's exactly pretty much what this channel is. So if you're not into that, this probably is not the channel for you. I'm a mess. So, disclaimer. Anyway, as you can tell by the title of this video, this is, um, you know, a court hearing kind of overview big court overview. If you see my other court vlogs, you know, I typically film before, right before and right after court. And I was just not able to do that today. Emotions were too high. Too much was going on. I just didn't have it in me to film and I just couldn't do it. So I, I'm not going to give the whole backstory. If you want to know, uh, if you want to know more information, if you feel lost in this video, then go back and watch our foster care update video, which is the last video that I posted. I'll link it in the description box below. But we have three placements currently. Our first placements ever, only placements, a two-year-old foster son, a three, almost four-year-old foster son, and then a baby girl we brought home from the hospital and she's five and a half months old. So we've got our, we got a full house here. Today was the annual hearing for the boys and they have been in care since the end of June last year. So it's been over a year. Obviously when they came into care, the baby wasn't here yet. So this is the case that also they decided to kind of loop them together and they filed for goal change for all three children, the DCBS did. So just a quick rundown of kind of how this goes is you sit out in the waiting room, you wait for the names to be called of the case and you go in and the social worker is sworn in and she gives a rundown of everything that's been going on in the case and what has been done, what hasn't been done and why they think the goal should be changed. Then, um, obviously the attorneys kind of step in and object there was, but there was the one by a family member that's been working the case, also a biological father was there that I've never seen before um, with his attorney, um, an attorney for the unknown father of um, the baby girl and an attorney for um, another child. Um, what, and he wasn't, pr and that bio father was not present. So we had a full house today. Um, this was also the first case that a first court date that my family has been there for. Um, they hadn't, we've been to court multiple times before, but never have they been there. So when I saw them walk in, I kind of knew that this was going to be a very different experience and probably very emotional and very dramatic. And it was definitely that, which just goes along with this dramatic last 48 hours we've been, we've been having. So I guess a little bit of a backstory with what happened yesterday is we had visit and the bio family member that's been work, working the plan or has a plan um, said that there was a family member potentially able to take them. And so that kind of throws you off because they've been in care for over a year the boys have and you know the baby's been in care her whole life and um no one's ever come forward and when the baby was born there was you know a potential family member that was looked into but apparently wasn't willing to take all three and they weren't willing to separate so I don't know if that's exactly how this will go I don't know if this family member is able to take all three, wants to take all three. I don't know. The social work worker has made it pretty clear that they're not willing to separate them. But, <clears throat> so, you know, just hearing that kind of throws you because you don't know these people. You don't, you don't know what kind of people they are. You don't know what will happen. You know, we don't know if they're going to be moved. If, you know, if, I don't know. You just don't know. And it's heartbreaking and it's hot it's you know it's of course it's heartbreaking for us not knowing whether or not they are going to stay or they're going to leave but it's worse for them because as i mentioned in my last video my oldest really had struggles when adjusting to change he's he just struggles with that and he just struggled a lot when he first got here and i just now that he i feel like all this time has gone by and he's really just now feeling safe and secure with us and knowing that we're not going anywhere like at visits he would constantly he constantly asked like you're coming back right you're coming back right he, he was just so terrified and he's just now kind of working back from that and like 
knowing that we are there for him. And the thought of him having to go live with some stranger is just heartbreaking and heartbreaking to know that we would potentially never get to see them again. And, you know, to them, my husband and I are mommy and daddy. And so that's just, I don't know how they would react from that. I don't know if they would ever get past it. And I don't know. I just don't know, you know, it's hard. And of course, you know, selfishly, we love them and, and, um, we would definitely be open to adopting them if it got to that point. And I'll just be honest, that just is what it seems like up until this point. It's what it seemed like. Um, there had been no family that was open or able to take them. So, you know, when we had been discussing goal change to adoption, we were the only family in line to adopt them. I mean, it was just, it seemed almost set in stone. And then, of course, you know, something happens. And it's just like, <clears throat> it's hard. So, during this, after after all the attorneys objected and so what, the Bow family wanted to make a statement. So, she decided to, to testify and kind of told her story and her side of things and... You know, asked the judge if he would be willing to consider giving her some more time and not to give up on her and um which was heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking to see the emotions in the courtroom today. It was just it was really hard. Um it was hard to keep emotions back myself. Um it's just hard. It's just an awful situation. No, I mean, nobody won today. There's no winning right now. It's just there's there is no winning. I don't feel like ever in this in this situation because even at adoption they're gaining a family, but they're also losing one. It's just it's just hard. And so we listened to that, and at that point the judge made his ruling that he was going to change all three children's goal to adoption. So. The only issue with this um, is the baby's goal change is somewhat tentative. It can be reversed, which all of it can be reversed. But it's at this point, it's very unlikely for the boys' goals to get changed back. But but more so likely for the babies. And that is because of the identity of the father is unknown legally and he's never come forward. And so the attorney representing the unknown father of the baby, you know, spoke up and, you know, objected the goal change because... His father may not even know his father's a child and, you know, may want to participate and may want to be a part of her life. So, you know, of course, that's his job to object to that. And so the judge said, I understand that and I completely note that. And if that father wants to come forward and work a plan, then we'll reverse that for her. So that's a potential as well. Um, but as far as the fathers of the two other boys, of the two boys, I think that it's pretty much I don't no one's coming forward to work a plan I'll just say that no one's coming forward to work a plan if they did that might change things but I don't know um so all this was done in district court and so now that the ruling has been made for the goal to be changed we move to circuit court and we will have a new judge and what happens now is that the social workers work for TPR. And if you don't know what that is, that is termination of parental rights. And they will, when they terminate parental rights, they terminate them on anybody and everybody. That is that family. It's like mother, father, aunt, uncle, grandma, great, and great cousin, third removed. It, they, it's everybody. Everybody is in that one, you know thing that way that they, when they're adopted there's nobody that comes forward and it's like oh but I want them now and you just can't do that so that's what's next to what that's what happens after the goal is changed to adoption and this can be a long process um I've heard years between goal change and and, and TPR but that is not what I seem what it seems like is going to be happening in this case um, the social workers have to file a petition in circuit court, and at, it's my understanding that those are ready to go. Um, so, they seem to think it will be before the end of this year that that is done. Um, but the family has, a, has the right to appeal that, and that 
they have to, there's a 30 day waiting period post TPR that they can file an appeal. And if they file an appeal, that extremely lengthens the time um, available at that point. I mean, I've heard of appeals taking years. That would, it really lengthen the time um, before that the kids could get permanency. So after that, after TPR is done, then they'll move forward with adoption. Right now, all three goals, all the all three of the children's goals is adoption. And um, so let me just make this clear. That does not mean that we get to adopt them um, or that we will be adopting them. Um, we were told in training that not to think that you're adopting until those papers are signed in front of you. So, um, anything can happen between now and TPR. They could be moved. There could be family members that come forward. There could be a bajillion different things happen that stop TPR or halt TPR at the time. And visits continue during this process. So, obviously, you want TPR to be quick as possible just because, you know, these, especially the boys have been in care already a year. They desperately need permanency. They need a forever family, a forever home. And... You know, that's why these laws are in place, you know, to hurry this process along. Basically, what I'm hoping for is just that this process moves fast. And as far as this family member, that's, that's, it's, it's hard because you don't know what's going to happen with that. And if they, if that family was to work out, there may or may not be a transition period where the kids can get used to them and know them and spend time there before they just have to live there. But if that's not always the case, obviously we would advocate, advocate for a transition period, but it can be approved or denied, I don't know. Um, and at that point, that's up to that family if they want them to have any contact with us at that point. So we have no right to contact them or to stay in their lives or to visit with them or anything. We don't have any rights for that. So that's what's scary, you know, is that we would lose, we could potentially lose all contact with them. And obviously we love them more than anything in the world. And, you know, we want to, even if they were to leave, we would want to still be a part of their lives. And it's just, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking because I don't want them to think that we've abandoned them. And, that's something that we've really had to work with is that they are really afraid of abandonment. I feel like they think they think that everybody is going to leave and that I just would never want them to think that we have abandoned them. And I think, how do you explain that to a two and a four year old um, that we don't get to see you anymore, but we love you. Um, I don't know how you explain that to them and I don't know. I don't know if they would be able to get past that because obviously they're just as attached to us as we are attached to them. And you know, they're, we're their family and we're the ones that come in when they have nightmares and and then tuck them in every single night and take them to school and feed them dinner. It's just, we are what they know now. And the only thing that they have can and can feel secure and safe in. And I just hate the thought of that being taken away from them. They have finally got into a routine and are stable and thriving. And I feel like if they were to be moved, that one, it would just completely throw off everything. I just don't know that they could continue to thrive at that point. I just don't know what they would think happened to us. And I never want them to end up in this situation themselves. And I just fear that that's where they would end up. And I just, I want to see them go to college and I want to see them be successful. And I want to see them get married and have children and... I want to be a part of their lives and I just but I want them to be successful and happy and healthy and if they move to this place I don't know I don't I won't know anything and 
I just don't know how I could sleep at night not knowing if they were okay, if they were safe, if they were happy, if they were loved. I just, I don't know. And I don't know, I don't know how they could get back on track after they leave because they had such a struggle coming here and it took therapy and patience, lots of patience. And I just don't know if um, they'll be able to go through it again. Another move. And so, I don't know. Basically everything is I don't know. Um, you know, we kind of thought that today was a step closer to adoption um but now it feels further away and it's just i don't say that that i mean like i never supported reunification but we've been the only family that they've known this last you know year or so and obviously they have the bio family member that's been working the plan but that's it and you know they see that person two hours a week and you know we're with them the rest of the time and so like where would they know now where they're comfortable you know and I just don't know it's hard to think about them starting over and I just don't know what that would do to their mental health if they did and that's the worst part of it all so I don't know. I don't know, guys. We just want the best for them. We just want them to be happy and healthy and loved. And if they're here, obviously, we're going to give that to them. And even if they leave, we would try to stay in contact if that family would allow it. But like I said, we have no right. So it's completely would be their decision. And so, from here forward, basically we wait to figure out if this family is open and available and able to take all three children. We wait to find out more information about the baby's potential father. And we wait for TPR hearing. That's what's coming in the near future. So basically, it's just hurry up and wait. And so we're gonna try to resume life as usual. And obviously we're trying to shield any of this and any of our emotions from the kids because we don't want them to know any of this is going on. We just want them to live happy and, and carefree and not have to worry about this stuff. And so, <clears throat> we're kind of having a moment, and then we're going to have to pull it together. <sighs> because we've got three little lives that are in this next room, and they need us, and they need us to stay strong. So that's what we're going to try to do, and we're going to try to just trust that there's a plan in place. And it will work out in the best interest of them. And that's all we can do. So in the meantime, I will ask you to keep them in your thoughts and in your prayers if you pray. Um, because this is just, their whole life can change in a second. And they don't even know it. And... You know, these kids need permanency. And whether that's with us, whether that's with a family member, whether it's back with bio family, they need permanency. And, and you know, and this needs to happen fast. So that's really all I have. Um, like I said, just keep them in your thoughts and your prayers because things are still going to be changing and coming up and it's the unknown um someone 
wants to tell me that the only thing certain in foster care is uncertainty. And, oh, God, I've never heard a truer statement. And it's like, oh, we thought we knew today I was going to go down. And, boy, we had no clue. We had no clue what we were about to walk into. And that is foster care. That is completely 110% foster care. So, I hope this doesn't discourage potential foster parents. Um, even if they left today, I would not regret one second of all of this hurt and pain because they've been loved and cared for since they've been here and they've got to experience things that I know that they wouldn't have been able to experience otherwise. And, you know, they, they got to get attached to us and they got to love us and got to feel this love that we have for them. And I, I won't take, you know, I wouldn't take that back for the world. So I'm not, it's worth it. It's 100% worth it. Even if we don't adopt them, even if they, even if they go to another family member or something, it's worth every second of it because, you know, we're what they needed at that time. And if it's not forever, it's not forever, but that's what would they needed at that time. And I really, really believe that. And I feel like that's what every kid, you know, every foster kid, even if they don't get adopted by that fam that foster family, that foster family is exactly what they needed at that time. So we're just trying to have faith in that. And, you know, our family is religious, so we just are trying to trust that it's in God's hands. And, you know, there's no better hands that it could be in. And, you know, trust Him and trust His plan and... Just know that he's going to take care of them wherever they are. So, but that's it. I will see you guys in my next video. I don't know when that will be. We are soaking up every minute with these kiddos and we'll continue to do so. So, as far as like a schedule, uplo uploading schedule, I don't have one right now. It was previously Sundays and occasionally Wednesdays, but it's just going to be whenever I can get a video out now. It's just my family is my first priority and that's just where I need to be right now especially with things being up in the air the way that they are I just want every second with them as possible and I hope that you understand that but I will try to have more videos for you and I just thank you guys for watching and coming along this journey with us I, I just think it's so crazy to look back and the videos before we got a placement and here we are <laughs> so many months later you know going through all this so you guys are the best. You guys, you guys make me so happy. You guys are so friendly and, and so thoughtful. And you guys seriously, I feel like you guys really love our family and, and support us and just your encouraging comments. They just mean the world and they lift us up even on our worst days. So we thank you for that. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, comment down below, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.